Jerry Lundegaard. You got the car? You bet. Brand new burnt umber Sierra. You want your own wife kidnapped. Her dad, he's real well off. So why don't you just ask him for the money? <laughs> See, these are personal matters. Personal matters? I'm... Wait, it's Jerry. I don't know what to do. It's my wife. We gotta talk. It's something hard, geez. It's terrible. I got the state looking for a Sierra with a tag starting VLR. I'm not sure that I agree with you 100% on your police work there, Lou. I think that vehicle there probably had dealer plates. Jeez. DLR? No, they said no cops. Here's the second one. So we got a trooper pull someone over. This a new car then, sir? Oh, it certainly is, officer. Still got that smell. There's a high-speed pursuit. We got a shooting. And then this execution-type deal. A million dollars a lot of damn money. They got my daughter. Are you, hon? Brought you some lunch, Margie. What are those, night crawlers? Oh, yeah, looks pretty good. How's Jean? Who's Jean? My wife. <laughs> well, the little guy, he was kind of funny looking. You were having sex with a little fella then. Yeah. Mr. Lundegaard, you mind if I sit down? Carrying quite a load here. Where's Jerry? I got your damn money. Now, where's my daughter? Jeez. Blood has been shed. We now want the entire 80,000. I answered the darn. I'm cooperating here. You have no call to get snippy with me. I'm just doing my job here. What do you fellas got yourself mixed up in? Police! So, is there anything else you can tell me about him? He wasn't circumcised. Oh, yeah? shot Walter Delacroix and raped Hope Percy and stabbed her 17 times. In the courtroom at a sentencing, he was smiling and chewing his gum. He is an unfeeling, perverse misfit, and it is time. You've put in a request to be the spiritual advisor of Matthew Ponsley. This boy is to be executed in six days. Do you know what you're getting into? They are all con men. You must be very, very careful. Well, Matthew, I made it. You've never done this before? No. You've never been this close to a murderer before? Not that I know of. What is a nun doing in a place like this? I ain't killed nobody. I swear to God I didn't. Ponsolet claims Patello killed both of them. <laughs> both say the other did the actual killing and somebody's lying to somebody. Let's talk about that night. I don't want to talk about that. As your friend, I want to help you die with dignity, and I don't see how you can do that unless you start to own up to the part you played in Walter and Hope's death. That skull. Rob me of my only son. You don't know when you see your child leave through a door that you're never going to see them alive again. Do you ever think about those kids? I want to take a lie detector test. I want my mama to know I didn't kill any kids. How can you sit by Ponsolet's side? I like being alone with you. You're looking real good to me. Death is breathing down your neck. You're playing your little mad on the make games. You still got a judge in the federal court that can put a stop to this. I asked you to be in the woods that night. I told you, I was stoned out of my head. You blame the government, you blame drugs, you blame blacks. Get out of the car! What about Matthew Ponsolin? This is not a person. This is an animal. Well, I got a thing or two to say the person's in the Delacours. You want your last words to put words of hatred? Here's man walking! From writer-director Tim Robbins comes a story about looking into the eyes of a killer and finding the heart of a man. Susan Sarandon. I want the last thing you say in this world to be face love. So you look at me. Sean Penn. No more bond for myself! No more that in the Governor, please, don't execute this man. Dead Man Walking. Working, studying, struggling year after year. You know how to work and studying, struggling year after year. No matter how hard life is. You're fired, Claudia. I have to. <laughs> no matter how difficult things are. Oh, Mom. And I'm going to have sex with Tim. We talked it out like adults because we're not jerks and we fully realize this is a major step. Safely. And not in the car. 
Happy Thanksgiving, Mom. There's one place you can always go that's worse. Hi. Claudia Larson is going home for the holidays. Henry! I can see your roots, Claudia. When you see your father's organ, he can't keep his hands off it. Dear Lord, we realize just lately everything's been changing too damn fast. And all sorts of things are always the same, even things we hated, like shoveling the turkey and stuffing the snow. This is ridiculous. Aunt Gladys waiting. We gotta go. Come on. Come on, I'm serious. <laughs> You have to soak this whole tablecloth in vinegar and lemon juice now, Mother, and right away. I have to burn it in hell. That's a sporty necklace. You make that yourself? From Luke. Paramount Pictures presents a film by Jodie Foster. When you go home, do you look around and wonder, who are these people? Where did I even come from? Oh! Here's to us. That's my car, man. What are you doing? What the? Americans. Into the house. Everyone. Before we're in the evening news. Let's go out and keep eating, okay? Ah! It'll be okay if we just stuff ourselves till we can't even think anymore. Home for the holidays. Mom, she like spot love us together? Who on earth is that ravishing boy? Harrington! Oh my God. I was just thinking about that disgusting old man with a beard. He's a bugger. I never know what that means. He's a homosexual. You really like to be called Cat. My first name is Dora. Oh, I see. You know as well as I do, it's a sickness with Carrington. Girl of that age, still a virgin. I was still a virgin at her age. So was I. Is there to be no progress? You must have patience. It is killing me. Someone must explain to her, someone who she respects, that I'm an important artist. And you think if she realizes that, she'll love I'm sure of it. I tend to be rather impulsive in these matters. Like the time I asked a Virginia Woolf to marry me. She turned you down? No. No, she accepted. It was ghastly. I've been meaning to tell you, I can't say I really approve of Rex. My real name is Reginald. Myself, I'm very much in favor of Rafe. Rafe. He tells me if you don't marry him, he's resolved to go and live abroad. I shall go to Bolivia. <laughs> I think I ought to go and tell him I love you. I was always very aware that you're my friend and she's my wife. I mean, your wife. Can't you see it? And I'm asking you to help me. My dear, as we both know, I'm supposed to be bringing you together. These last few months, whenever I know I'm going to see you, I get so excited inside. Are you going to live with him? But he's just a disgusting pervert. You always have to put up with something. What do you think we ought to do about the physical? I don't mind about that. Ah, uh, but you should. What can you be thinking of going out in this way? Just to be fair to you. I can never have a child, unless it was yours. People in love should never live together. When they do, the inevitable result is that they either fall out of love or drive one another insane.